if you're one of those people that finds the sort of um, bashing of religion and stuff tiresome or uh, offensive, just give me five more minutes. <laughs> Morality is written there in simple white and black I feel sorry for you heathens, got to think about all that Good is good and evil's bad and goats are good and pigs are crap You'll find which one is which and the good because it's good and it's a book and it's a book yeah. And Drew Bale was Gideon, which answered with a rather convoluted question from the previous chapter And all the people were confused because the great hero of Yahweh was named after a false god it cannot possibly be the case that Baal, Astroth, and Yahweh were all minor deities of equal power in the same polytheistic belief system. And it cannot possibly be the case that the entire sixth chapter of this book of stupid was an interpolation edited into the text after the fact to try to explain that Drubiel, who was Gideon, was a follower of Yahweh all along. This is just one of those ironic names, such as an atheist named Christina. So Drubiel, who is Gideon, and all the people that were with him rose up early, ate breakfast, drank a cup of coffee, and read the newspaper. They pitched beside the wall of Harad, which I challenged thee to be able to find on a map, so that the host of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of Moray, in the valley, and thou will just have to take my word for it. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands, lest Israel bunk themselves against me, saying, Mine own hand hath saved me. And Gideon was thoroughly confused at this point. Wait just a minute, he said unto Todd. It was you who sold the Israelites into the hands of the Midianites and charged me with the task of rescuing them. Now you're flipping the script so that you were the one doing all the work to save Israel? And Todd said unto Gideon, Yeah, that's about right. And Gideon said, Well, then what in the rot gut of bloody hell was the point of the previous chapter? And Gideon walked up to his massive army and said, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead, which is apparently where we are at this particular point in time, although the Book of Judges was not altogether specific about that. And his entire army just stood there staring at him, and none of them moved a muscle. And Gideon got nervous, as at this point the narrative was not following the script, and Gideon started observing the soldiers down the water and warned the fine soldiers that lapped up the water like a dog or bowed on their knees to drink. Alas, all the soldiers were drinking water out of army-issued canteens, and were still staring at Gideon, waiting for further instructions. And Gideon said, Bloody hell, what is wrong with you people? Why aren't you following the script? According to the Bible, all but about three hundred of you are to receive honorable discharges and go back home. And the soldiers answered and said, Thou must be insane, he who serves Yahweh but is named after Baal. We have been waiting for three chapters to get into a good fight. Some of these poor blokes never fought in a battle since this particular book began. We're not going anywhere. And Gideon thought long and hard about how to correct the situation and came up with a brilliant idea. He pulled out a picture of the ridiculously photogenic guy, folded it into a paper aeroplane, and threw it into the river. The vast majority of the soldiers then jumped into the river in despair and were not seen again until the end of the chapter. Gideon then turned to the soldiers that remained, his very own 300, and asked, just out of morbid curiosity, why didn't they chase after the ridiculous Gen guy pitcher as well? The soldiers laughed and said, Oh, please, we've all seen pictures of Prophet N.T.H.'s husband. That devilish hunk of an Italian is so devastatingly handsome that he makes the ridiculously photogenic guy look like a big, fat, slobbering pig. He makes us all question our own sexuality, even though we're all straight as two-by-fours. And the Lord said unto Gideon, by these three hundred will I save you, and deliver the Midianites into thine hand, for I will not actually do any of the work myself after all. And thou shalt say unto the Midianites, This is Israel! And Gideon gave to each of the three hundred victuals, trumpets, and pocket copies of the New Testament, with the same writing on the cover, placed by Gideon. And the host of Midian was beneath him in the valley, and he was a fine host who poured his guest drinks, put on some good music, and made sure the Midianites were quite comfortable indeed. And it came to pass the same night, whichever night that was, that the Lord said unto him, Arise, get thee down unto the host, and order unto thyself a martini, and I will deliver it into thine hand. And if thou fear to go down, and perhaps you should, as you just involuntarily discharged the vast majority of thine army the day before I master battle, Go thou with Pura thy servant, who is broker all we're mentioning up to this point, down to the host. And mingle with the crowd, and talk about the weather and the local sports team, and thou shalt hear what they say. And afterward thy hand shall be strengthened, for thou have been doing three hundred knuckle push-ups a day. And he went down with Pura his servant, who hammed it up, for this was his only scene in the Literally Judges video series. 
They went down to the outside of the armen that were with the host and tried to stay inconspicuous. However, Pura evidently failed at this particular endeavor, considered that his name was never recorded in the Bible again. And the Midianites and the Amalekites and the children of the East lay along the valley like grasshoppers from multitude, all standing around doing whatever it was they were doing in the previous chapter. And the camels were without number as the sand by the seaside for a multitude. Well, that was obviously a bit of an exaggeration, which is something a person expects to be recorded in the completely accurate and literal book written by the almighty omniscient creator of the whole entire universe. And Gideon, who is also known as Jerubbaal, whose name was ironic as an atheist named after the Apostle Paul, came down to the Midianite camp. Evidently, the servant Pura's performance was less than satisfactory, as he was already written out of the story. There was a man who told a dream to his fellow and said, I dreamed a dream, and Andrew Lloyd Webber turned it into a Broadway musical. And his friend said, Really? What was it about? And he answered, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the host of Midian and came unto a tent and smote it that it fell. And the phantom of the opera kidnapped Christine Daae and a bunch of people danced around in cat costumes. And the colonel from the Monty Python sketches burst onto the stage and said, I'm sorry, I have to stop the stream because I'm afraid it's getting to be a bit too silly. And a British knight hit him on the head with a rubber chicken. And I woke up and now I'm confused. What do you think it means? And his friend said, I think it might be the fish you were eating last night. And Gideon, being all sneaky and stuff, stuck up behind them and said, This is nothing else save the sword of Gideon. And the men said, Who with the bloody hell is Gideon? The son of Joash. Who? A man of Israel. The men looked at each other in confusion and said, We've never heard of him. And Gideon said, He is the man the ridiculously phonogenic guy is smiling at. And the Midianites became slowly afraid, and they didn't know what to do. And Gideon returned to camp and told the three hundred, Arise, for the Lord hath delivered us to your hand the hosts of Midian. For tonight, we dine in Jerusalem! And he, he being Gideon, divided up the three hundred men into three companies. He put a trumpet into every man's hand, and all the soldiers were lost as to what to do with the other trumpet they were already holding from all the way in verse 8. They also had empty pitchers and lamps within the pitchers, so evidently the empty pitchers could not have been all that empty. And he said unto them, Look on me. Do I have anything stuck in my teeth? No? Well, anyway, look at me and do likewise. And the soldiers wondered how they were going to see what Gideon was doing all the way from the opposite side of the camp. And Gideon said, Behold, when I come unto the outside of the camp, it shall be that as I do, so shall ye do. And the soldiers said, Only if there is nothing complicated or confusing about the procedure, we're all on board with you. And Gideon said, When I blow the trumpet, I and all that are with me, then blow ye the trumpets also on every side of the camp, and say, The sword of the Lord, and of Gideon. And this is exactly how I expect you to do it, and there will not be any other steps added to the procedure. And soldiers agreed to do this, even though most of them didn't actually know how to play the trumpet. And Gideon, whose name is still as ironic as an atheist named after Timothy, and the hundred men that were with them, came into the outside of the camp in the beginning of the middle watch. And the soldiers who were supposed to be performing a roving patrol around the perimeter of the camp were sitting in a chair, fast asleep. And they had but newly set the watch, so you know it was keeping perfect time. And they, we can only presume that they, means the Israelites, not the Midianites, blew the trumpets to break the pitchers that were in their hands, adding a step that was not a part of the original plan. And the three companies, including the hundred soldiers with Gideon, who already performed this routine, blew the trumpets and break the pitchers. The hundred soldiers with Gideon picked up their broken pitchers and dropped them on the ground again, and held lamps with their left hands and the trumpets with the right hands to blow with all, adding yet one more detail that was not a part of the original plan. And they cried, The sword of the Lord, and of Gideon! And the viewer did not remember the scene from the movie 300. Of course, that movie was about King Leonidas and the Battle of Thermopylae and the Persian Wars. The big difference between Gideon and King Leonidas was that Leonidas actually existed, and the Battle of Thermopylae actually happened, pretty much as described. But anyway. And they stood, every man in his place around the camp, and all the hosts ran and cried and fled, and Gideon kicked them in the chest and knocked them down over the edge of the cliff. And the three hunters blew the trumpets just like they did the last time. And the Lord said, Every man's sword against his fellow, and we can only presume that this means the Midianites and not the Israelites. And the host fled to a bunch of places that I'm not even going to try to pronounce. And the men of Israel, and not the children of Israel, as is normally specified, gathered themselves together out of Naphtali, out of Asher, out of Manasseh, and pursued after the Midianites. 
And in case of viewers wondering whether or not something is missing out of this list, perhaps say a tribe of Israel that was mentioned in the previous chapter that was supposed to be a fight in the battle, congratulations, you get a cookie. The tribe of Zebulon was supposed to be there. And oh, by the way, what was the point of sending the rest of the army home and execute the engagement of only 300 soldiers, so as to display faith in Yahweh, when the dismissed soldiers were expected to fight in the battle anyway? There's nothing like a direct contradiction in this allegedly non-contradictory, completely accurate word of Almighty Todd. Anyway, Gideon, a.k.a. Drubiel, a name that is just as ironic as an atheist named after King David, sent messengers throughout all Mount Ephraim, saying, Come down against the Midianites and take them before the waters to Beth Berah and Jordan. And do not even begin to mention how I am once again violating the explicit instructions of Todd that I am only supposed to have 300 soldiers under my command. And all the men of Ephraim, who did not have the common decency to be mentioned in the previous chapter, gathered themselves together and took the waters unto Beth Berah and Jordan. And they, who they were, remains to specify, took two princes of the Midianites, Oreb and Zeb, who were bugger all worth mentioning prior to this verse, and they slew Oreb upon Rock Oreb, and Zeb they slew at the wine press of Zeb, which are rather conveniently named, and pursued after Midianites, and took the heads of Oreb and Zeb to Gideon on the other side of Jordan, and there is nothing quite like the joy of a run-on sentence. And the viewer, we're kindly ignore the fact that this entire narrative sounds like a story that was completely made up as they would along. But do remember, my dear viewers, that we are only seven chapters into this ancient book of Stupid, and there is more excitement to follow. If I wanna know how to be good, it's to the good book that I go, cause the good book is a book, and it is good, and it's a book.